Welcome back. Uh, we're still in this video series on interactive visualizations. We're kind of right at the start because uh, we're going to start by talking about how to make individual plots interactive. Uh, so, you know, we, at this point, we've learned you know how to make density plots and histograms and x y scatter plots and how to plot uncertainties. And how could we make plots like those? Uh, more interactive for the usual users, just thinking about this on the scale of an individual plot. Um, so one library that is really handy for that, and the one that we're going to start focusing on, is called Plotly. And Plotly.js is a JavaScript library that's widely used uh, to make interactive graphics. You've probably interacted with graphics like this on the web and just never realized what was underlying it. Um, and thankfully, there is a uh, Plotly R library that provides an interface onto this JavaScript library. library. So within R, we can make plots using uh, commands similar to what we've been using. And, uh, and then we'll make these, these interactive plots that we can use. Uh, you know, we can look at them by themselves. We can embed them in our markdown documents. We can put them up on web pages, uh, things like that. And uh, there's kind of a couple of things we're going to focus on. Uh, so plot underscore ly is kind of the direct interface to the, the Plotly library, and it has a syntax that is similar to ggplot, but a little bit different. Uh, and the, you know, but it's more direct, so it gives you more low-level control of what the JavaScript library is actually doing, but it kind of requires learning, anyways, a third way of making plots on top of you know, the base graphics and the ggplot. Uh, ggplotly can convert a ggplot uh, object into uh, a plotly figure. That one can be particularly handy if you've started diving into the kind of the, the ggplot way of making plots. As we saw uh, in the last couple lectures, there are definitely some kind of cool visualizations that we can do in ggplot that are harder to do in base and vice versa. So there's some basic visualizations that are just you know, simpler to do, it's quick and easier to do in, in base. Uh, so there's good to know both. But there's not a way to convert base graphics uh, into Plotly directly. Uh, and then there's two other versions of Plotly, Plot Map Box and Plot Geo, that are, can be handy for uh, exploring spatial data. And I'll just say right now that uh, making uh, Plotly graphics of interactive spatial data is beyond this initial first lecture on Plotly, but something that I would encourage you to, to follow up on because there's some cool resources and, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of uh, geospatial uh, data that we encounter in environmental sciences. It's kind of like, how would you make you know, neat, neat interactive graphics out of something that might have come out of GIS? So here's an example of uh, a simple plotly figure for just making uh, some, some bar plots. And here, uh, you know, we have the plotly command, we pass it our data frame, and then we use the pipe command to send this over to, to adding the histogram. So this is actually making uh, a bar chart. Uh, this is with a, a built-in data set on diamonds where we're binning them by, you know, the type of cut. And, uh, you know, when we just look at it, it looks like a normal bar plot, uh, like we would get out of ggplot. But if we hover over it, we see that this menu of commands kind of now magically appears. And there's a bunch of different commands here. Uh, since this is a very simple plot, not all of them are, are useful. One that is most useful is these little uh, data information tabs. And if we click on those, then we will actually be able to hover over each bar and not just get you know, what we normally visually do, which is see the approximate value of things. We actually get the exact numeric value for each bar when we hover over it. Uh, the double thing is for comparing. In this case, we don't have things close enough to compare. Um, but we can also zoom in. You know, if I wanted to focus just on these two bars, I could zoom in. Um, I can pan, so I can drag it over. Uh, there's box and lasso select. Zoom in, zoom out. Auto scale, bring this back. Let me set that to bring us back. Spike lines, we'll see that will be more valuable because it kind of shows uh, lines down to the x and y axis. Uh, I find that more valuable for, for more 
interest, uh, yeah, more complicated figures. Yeah, so it's, it's kind of neat. So all these kind of interactive features just kind of happen automatically, having just fed this library the, the basic data set. We didn't have to code up how any of that worked, which is actually quite cool. Uh, to move on to a slightly more interesting version, so we now take that same data set, uh, and instead of uh, just looking at the cut we're using of the diamond, we're using the clarity as uh, a second factor, and now we can see that these uh, different colors represent different col clarities for the same data set, same overall pattern, but now we have many more bars, and with that gives us the ability to see a number of other features of Plotly. So now if I have compare data, I can look at an individual set of bars, and now I see the numeric values for, for all of the um, variables that I'm looking at. Which is kind of cool. The other thing that's kind of cool is if I go to this legend and double click on it, I can actually turn on and off individual bars. So I'll you know, put those back on and let's say, let's say I was really interested in these low ones and comparing those, I might get rid of the highest. Uh, data so I can take a better look at what's going on here, and then maybe I want to uh, zoom in, oops, zoom in just on this one data set. And it, you know, again, just fairly simple syntax. Okay. Next, I can use uh, Plotly to make uh, scatter plots as well. So here, instead of we're passing it to the tr add trace function, uh, x equals air temperature, y equals long wave. So this is the same met data set we've used in the last couple labs. Type scatter plot, and it looks like a scatter plot. But now when I mouse over it, I can see the 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 value of any individual data point. And if I have the spike lines, I can now kind of see those lines for each points. I can Oh, and it also has this handy download function. So if I wanted to, you know, look at a spe specific subset of data, let's say I want to look at this low negative data, zoom in there, and then I want to take a picture of that, it downloads that just that figure. Um, as I mentioned, uh, uh, there's also, in addition to learning Plotly's own syntax, you might decide that it's it's simpler for you to just learn ggplot syntax and pass that off to Plotly. So here's an example of making a very similar plot to the one we just saw using ggplot. So we just you know, load up the met data, set x and y axes. In the aesthetics, say this is tell them that this is point data. We'll make the points blue, uh, and then we plot the data. And so this is a no standard non-interactive plot coming out of ggplot, but we saved that plot to this object g, and then, you know, just printed g to be able to see the plot. If I then take that plot object and pass it to ggplotly, it'll, instead of just plotting it, it'll now, again, render it in an interactive way. So it's very similar to what we saw with plotly, but now we've used ggplot syntax and just plot past that figure uh, into ggplotly. Um, and that gives us access to some of the features that exist in, in ggplot. So for example, here's the same data set, but instead of um, looking at just the raw data in terms of points where we had a lot of overlapping points, I have passed pass this to the, the hex for function so that I can now look at the density of data where counts are, are representing uh, counts within a hex, and now I can kind of zero in more quickly and see some of these high density areas and hovering over I get the counts within those bins and again I can zoom yep cool <coughs> so some additional resources uh, related to plotly and interactive graphics more generally um, in preparing for this lecture I found uh, this book by Carson Siever, Interactive Web-Based 
data visualization with R, Plotly, and Shiny uh, handy, and all the text is available on the Plotly R website. So the whole book is, is open there. Um, also found useful, uh, the, so going beyond just uh, Plotly, there are actually a bunch of other uh, libraries out there, and this uh, HTML wi widgets is kind of a uh, interface to a lot of other R libraries that link to other JavaScript libraries. So if I click on that, um, you will see, and it comes up that there are you know 116 registered widgets available to explore. The first one that comes up with Plotly because it is by far uh, the most uh, popular, but there's other popular ones like Diagrammer and Leaflet. Leaflet is great for making maps. Uh, and then just a whole bunch of other uh, visualization systems, like these network diagrams and uh, things like that. Um, so a whole, whole bunch of other library options out there for interactive visualizations, and there's no way we could possibly cover all of them. Uh, on that HTML widgets website, you can also learn about Flex Dashboard, which is al allows you to compose multiple HTML widgets into one dashboard, so you can have multiple interactive figures on a single uh, web page or dashboard of some sort. And then this other uh, crosstalk library, which is handy to do what's called linked brushing across these HTML widgets, which basically means if I select something in one interactive pane, the, the same, the, the, that same thing gets shown in the other interactive plane. So if I'm you know, zooming, uh, you know, selecting one set of data here, it'll help you know, visualize that set of data there. So that can be kind of, again, useful for uh, exploring things in more detail. And it's kind of, I think goes by the term of linked brushing, being coupling between uh, these interactive visualizations. Okay, so next we're gonna Next up, we'll talk about animation.